preach, preach a message that God gave me about three weeks ago for two weeks in a row. And I wake up on Sunday morning and he changes, changes it all up. So I'm going to just hold on to it. I know it'll be a time and place for that one, but you know, I just want to obey the Lord. He knows what we need to hear more than I do, praise God. So I just want to obey him. I even slept in this morning. I usually get up around 6, 6.30 on Sunday morning and get to praying and seek the Lord. And I get up about 8 this morning and then started praying. And the Lord was like, I ain't where you go. <laughs> I said, I ain't got much time now. <laughs> Amen. But he, uh, he knows what he's doing. Praise the Lord. Amen. If I'd have preached that message, I, would have, I, I wanted to preach what nothing happened. Amen. And I know he's going to move today. Praise God. He's going to honor his word. Praise the Lord. I'm just forever grateful for that. First Chronicles chapter 28, verse 20 and 21. Praise the Lord. First Chronicles chapter 28, verse 20 and 21. Say amen when you get there. Amen. I went to Walmart yesterday. My wife, she drove me all over the place yesterday. But anyhow, I found some Bibles, son, and I could see these words. Amen. <laughs> They were getting a little bit smaller in that other one, so uh, I can just I can see these, amen. Praise the Lord. First Chronicles chapter 28, verse 20, 21. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, And David said to Solomon, his son, Be strong and of good courage and do it. Fear not. Nor be dismayed, for the Lord God, even my God, will be with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee, until thou hast finished all the work for the service of the house of the Lord. And behold, the courses of the priests and the Levites, even they shall be with thee for all the service of the house of God. And there shall be with thee for all manner of workmanship, every willing, skillful man, for any manner of service, also the princes and all the people will be holy at the commandment. Praise God. If you would stand all over God's house, just invite his presence to the remainder of this service. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your many blessings. I thank you for this opportunity to be able to come, Lord God, and just soak in your presence, Lord Jesus. I pray for each and every soul represented under the sound of my voice, Lord God, that you teal that soil up so that seed would fall on good ground and bring forth much fruit, Lord God. I bind the spirit of hell that's coming against this service right now in Jesus' name, Lord God. Ask you to lose victory, encouragement, strength in this house today, Lord God. I just praise your holy name for that finished work on Calvary, that we're able to have, have that victory in this life and a promise unto the next, Lord God. And Lord Jesus, I pray that you don't let me say anything outside of your will today. I'm nothing, Lord God. I'm a zero, Lord Jesus, and I cannot, we, we can't have church without you, but I can't preach, Lord Jesus, unless you preach through me and anoint this old vessel of clay today, Lord God. And Lord Jesus, I just praise you for what you're going to do. Be with us in these altars in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. As I said, I began to get ready this morning and, and pray and thought I was just going to fall right into what he'd already given me, amen, and it began to let me know that that wasn't the route I was, I was going. And, and I read the scripture yesterday and he began to deal with my heart on an issue, on a subject, not necessarily an issue, and, 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 uh, and, and just began to deal with my heart even more, praise God, and, and it just started coming to me. But I want to preach to you today, let God show me. Amen. Let God show you. Praise God. Amen. Here we have David, and he's encouraging his son. Amen. I'll back up a little bit. David had been a mighty, mighty man of God. Amen. A uh, man after God's own heart. Praise God. And he, he began to uh, ask God about, you know, inquiring God about building a temple for God. And God let him know just how he wanted to get it done. He, he wanted this a certain way. He he wanted that a certain way, and he just began to give David all these things. I'm going to set this on over here a little bit, and I don't want to trip over it. But anyhow, he began to give him all these different things, amen. But he did tell him, your man of war, you shed blood, so you cannot build my house, amen. Solomon, your son, will be the one that's ordained to do such a thing, praise God. 
Amen. So he ordained Solomon to do this thing. And I can imagine how Solomon feels, amen. Uh, you know, pretty much like we all feel when we get called to do something. Just unqualified. Can I get an amen on that? Just feel so unqualified because we want to do such a good job for the Lord that we just feel so unqualified. Can I stop right there and say, God don't need your qualifications. Come, come on, somebody. He don't need your qualifications, praise God. He can make it happen. He just needs a willing vessel. But I can imagine how Solomon was feeling. Amen. Going up to his daddy, just nervous about how everything's going to go and how everything's going to happen and this and how this is going to happen and how this is going that this is going to go and David here is encouraging his son saying don't you worry about a thing amen if you're willing to obey God and you're willing to walk in the footsteps that he's ordained you to walk in he's going to provide every single thing that you need along the way amen he's ordained you to do this you know, Solomon's probably worried about where's the gold going to come from to make all these utensils in the temple, the candlesticks, the the the, 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 the things that they sacrificed. Yeah, all this had to be gold inside of the temple. I mean, where is this thing going to come from? What about the, uh, the cedars and the stone that we're going to build this temple? Where are these things going to come from? Amen. And where, what about the... Uh, the, the uh, the men that it's going to take to build it. It wasn't a small building, amen. It was a rather large temple, praise God. Where are we going to get the men to build such a thing as this, praise God? And the Bible says in verse 21, he said, And behold, the course of the priests and the Levites, and even they shall be with thee of all the services of the house of God, and there shall be with thee for all manner of workmanship, every single willful, every willful skillful man, amen. He's going to provide all that God's telling me. Don't you worry about that. All I need you to do is do what I told you to do. Do what I told you to do. Obey me and keep putting one foot in front of the other. Don't be worried about anything else. Just do what I called you to do. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. You know, when we read the rest of the story, we see how God provided all of that. If you go to the book of, uh, I think it's 1 Kings, you see that, uh, I think it was uh, Beersheba, the queen, the queen of Sheba came down because she was one, she wanted to see how much wisdom that, uh, that Solomon had, and she just dumped treasures upon treasures upon this kingdom, amen. She, she, just, just, she just provided it, just came out of nowhere, amen. God provided it, amen. And I can't remember the king's name. It'll come to me after the service is over. But over in the uh, over in Lebanon, he, 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 uh, God laid it on this king's heart that David had acquired a uh, friendship with to get the cedars that would build this temple, amen. He had people already picked out to hew the stones. They couldn't do it on site. They had to carve out the stones to make the foundation. He had all this already planned out, amen. And as we read this story, we see that we can just step back and let God show us that we'll be willing to not get in his way and let God do it, amen. He's going to come to Jesus. It's going to come to pass. Amen. Praise God. You know, I remember praying about before we ever even got a contractor or anything like that. We had all kind of ideas up in the air about how we were going to do things and, 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 and everything. And, and I'm telling you right now, when I started looking at the amount of money that we had and the decision that needed to be made on it, I would get sick to my stomach just thinking about it. I'm talking about cold sweats and all. I'd be like, man, look, I don't even want to make this decision. Lord, just... Give it to somebody else, amen. But God didn't call somebody else to make it. He called me to come here and be the pastor and make that decision. Can somebody say amen? amen? But I remember specifically Sunday morning, I stood behind that pulpit, and I asked each and every one of you to fast and pray with me throughout that week, amen. It was Christmas week. Praise God. And I want to tell you right now, when I decided to step out of God's way and let him show me, amen, come on, somebody, he did just that. I remember waking up Christmas morning. We had Christmas dinner at my house that year, trying to just keep away and contain everybody because of the virus and whatnot. Amen. We did Christmas there, and I went on down the road, 
and saw another uh, friend of mine and hadn't seen him in a while and, and, and we were all praying about it. We were all we were all we were all fasting over it, amen. Got to talking to the man, he said, Well, I tell you what, I want to help you out. He went in his, in his back room back there, come out with his check in check checkbook, amen. Wrote me a check for ten thousand. Come on, somebody, that don't happen everywhere, amen. God said, if you just step back, I'll show you, amen. Wasn't too long after that, somebody else wrote another check for a little over $10,000. I want to tell you right now that if he's called you to do something, he just needs you to be a willing vessel to put one foot in front of the other, do what that Bible tells you to do, and, and he will show you that he can make it happen, praise God. Amen. I said, Lord, I see you. I see you. I hear you loud and clear, praise God. Amen. And I want to tell you right now, I may have gotten a little disturbed on some of the things here and there, but my peace is back in my heart. Amen. It's no longer getting, getting nauseated to the point I'm about to pass out or nothing like that. I said, get thee behind me, Satan. Amen. God's going to handle this, praise God. But we just got to let him show us. Amen. We got to let him show us. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. You know, when David was telling his son this, he already knew what God was capable of. Amen. amen. Before he even became king, amen, he went to fight, he went to battle with a giant, praise God. You know, his father, we all know the story all too well. His father went, in, uh, sent him over there to where uh, Goliath was at, and, 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 and he sent him to deliver some food. Praise the Lord. I think it was some uh, barley and bread and five cheeses or whatever the Bible says. I have to go back and read it. But his daddy sent him over there to provide him with some food. And David heard that giant down in that the valley defiling the, uh, the armies of God, defiling the people of God. And I'm going to tell you right then at that very moment, God supplied the need. Amen. He put the strength and the courage that he needed in his heart to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with that giant. Amen. He provided that for him. I praise God. God. Amen. The Bible says, I'm going to flip over and read some of it. Amen. Over in 1 Samuel chapter 17. Amen. If you want to flip there with me, 1 Samuel chapter 17 and verse 38 through 40, I'm going to read. But we all know the story all too well, and, and I'm getting a little ahead of myself right here. But anyhow, David, he shows up with these five, the, the, these uh, the, this food, and he hears that uh, giant down there. Everybody else is up on top of the hill, shaking in their boots. they scared to even want to fool with him. Amen. they just going to let him walk, uh, walk all over him. But as soon as David heard that, God placed the desire in his heart to go down there and handle it. Amen. And that's exactly what he did. But it, before he even went down there, verse 38, Saul, to, uh, he come up to Saul and it says that Saul armed David with his armor and he put a helmet of brass upon his head. Also he armed him with a coat of mail and David girded up his sword upon his armor and he essayed to go for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these for I have not proved them. And David put them off, put them off of him. And in verse 40 he says, and he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had even in a strip. And his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. Amen. Praise God that if we'll just step back, God will show us in the direction that we need to handle. Amen. The Bible says, amen, that, God, that, that, that Saul tried to put all this armor on David. Amen. He was just a little old tiny rough. Amen. He is piling all this armor onto him. When he gets up to that giant, if he'd have went and fought that giant with that armor on him, I'm going to tell you right now, David would have took it. I mean, Goliath would have took his head off because he couldn't move like he needed to. That, that armor, that weight was weighing him down, and the enemy was going to defeat him if he chose to do it the way Saul wanted him to do it. But he said, no, God's telling me to go over here and get these five smooth stones, amen, and sling a rock right into his forehead, praise God. We need to learn how to do it God's way, amen. If we'll step back and we'll, we'll, we'll just let him do his thing, we'll see the path that we need to think. I want to tell you right now, I know that people in this house right now are probably praying for things in their life that is not in the will of God, amen. And I want to tell you, if you don't stop praying for them, it's going to be just like you putting on that, well, that, 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 uh, that armor. It's going to weigh you down until the point that the devil or the enemy defeats you. Amen. 
You need to go over there where the five smooth stones are, amen. You need to go over there where the five smooth stones are and let, the, let God show you that he can do it, praise God. Amen. 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 There's a choice. I want to tell you right now, if it ain't in that Bible, it's not in the will of God. Amen. We may be praying for certain things in our life that are not in the will of God. And I want to tell you, it's just like that armor. It's going to weigh you down to the point that you're driving yourself insane trying to hold on to these things. Whether it's a situation that you're in, whether it's circumstances that's got that's in your life, whether it's a relationship that you're trying to hang up. Come on, somebody. Amen. You're putting that armor on when you need to go over and get those five smooth stones. Amen. Amen. Praise God. But we got to step back and have the faith to let God show us. Amen. we got to step back and have the faith to let God show us. Praise God. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Verse 20. Praise the Lord. Big old pages. Amen. 2 Corinthians in verse chapter 1 and verse 20 says, For all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. Amen. That ought to be enough scripture right there to tell you that you can step back and let him show you. Amen. Because every promise in this Bible is for you. Amen. Every promise in this Bible is for you. Praise God. And if you'll just let step back and just pray, God, I want you to handle this situation. I want you to handle it, amen, and let him show you that he can handle it, praise God. He will do it because his promises will come to pass, praise the Lord. Amen. There's two parts in a promise, though. There's an act of obedience, and there's a reward. Amen. Amen. There's an act of obedience. If you, if, you, if, you, uh, if you promise your kids something, you say, if you do this, I'll do this. Amen. And that's the same way it works with God. If you do this, he will do this. Praise God. I remember a time in my life, amen, when I was facing some time in prison. Amen. I was going to court over. I've been told you this story before, but it was one of the first times I saw a promise manifest in my life out of this Bible. Amen. Had to go on to court, had a couple of felonies over my head, and it was looking like I was going to have to go up the road for a couple of years. And I told God, I said, look, Lord, I, I'm all right with it if you are, amen, but I'd really like some favor in that courtroom where I can stay around the house, amen, because I guess if I need to go up there, somebody needs to hear the word of God, amen, from me, praise God, amen. But anyhow, I got in that courtroom and was sitting there waiting on them to call me up there, fishing up go up there and just see what they was going to give me, amen, and a man tapped me on the shoulder, brought me out to the little room they got in that over a mobile, amen, and he said, look, we can tell what you're trying to do, we can see you trying to straighten your life out, and we're going to drop these felonies to a misdemeanor, amen, but I remember reading the scripture before I went down there, in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33, the Bible says that if we seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, all of these things will be added unto you. He spoke directly to my heart before I went to that courtroom and he said, as long as you stay about my business, I'll fight all these battles, amen. As long as you preach like I want you to, as long as you witness like I want you to, as long as you walk according to my word, I will do what I need to do in your life, amen. If we'll just do it, amen, and let him show us, he will ever come to pass. Ooh, get our hands in it. Oh, I think it needs to go this way. I think it needs to go this way. And mess it all up. Amen. Amen. Well, we need to let God show us, praise God. Amen. Over in the book of Acts. Over in uh, uh, Acts chapter 12, a very familiar story. Amen. It's uh, about Peter, and it starts in verse 7. I'll read it to you. It says, and behold, this is Peter. He's in prison right now. Uh, for preaching the gospel. And, and the Bible says in verse 7, chapter 12, And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison. He smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise quickly, and his chains fell off from his hands. And the angel 
angel said unto him, Gird thyself up and bind up thy sandals. And so he did. And he saith unto him, Cast thy garment upon about thee and follow me. And he went out and followed him, and he wist not that he was true, which was done by the angel, but thought he was uh, uh, he saw a vision. When they were past the first and the second word, second ward, they came up to an iron gate that he leaded from the city, which opened them of his own accord, and they went out and passed on through one street, and forth the angel departed from him. Amen. There was a th there was a promise that was made, there was an act of obedience and a reward that was given to him. And I'm telling you right now, if you were any, in any kind of shape that I was in, amen, I felt like Peter did right here. I was stuck in a prison in my own mind, glory to God. Amen, I was stuck, amen, there wasn't no way out, praise God. But in verse eight, I believe it is, let me look, in verse eight, we see the angel said unto him, gird thyself up, bind on thy sandals, and he so he did, and he saith unto him, cast thy garment about thee, and follow me. And when Peter got up off his tail and started doing what the angel told him to do, amen, a miracle happened in his life, amen. I want to tell you right now, I don't know how many people can look at an iron gate and make it open up, but God made it happen for him, amen. I don't know how many people can just get up out of a dead sleep and follow an angel and just walk up out of Mobile County Metro Jail. It ain't going to happen, I promise you. But Peter got up out of his sleep. He did what the angel told him to do, followed him right on up out of that prison. And when he got to that gate, it just propped open. Because he let God show him he could do it. Amen. He let God show him he could do it. Praise God. Amen. How many of us, and you ain't got to raise your hand, but need God to show us something. Praise God. Amen. Amen. I know I'm praying for some things right now. I need God to show them. Amen. I told you here a while back, I was praying for somebody to uh, get a job closer to home, and I was trying to work this out, work this out where they could go here or this, they could go there. And God spoke directly to me. He said, why don't you just let me give them a job? Let me show you. Amen. That I can do it. Amen. I want to tell you right now that God wants to show you that he can do it. Amen. But we don't need to leave here and go right back into the same life that we went into. We need to do exactly what Peter did. Get up and follow them. Amen. Follow him. Praise God. We don't need to get up and go right back into the old routine, the old lifestyle, the old things. We need to get up and follow him. We need to get up and be more faithful to him. We need to get up and be at church when we're supposed to be. Come on, somebody. I'm preaching some people in here today. We need to be in God's hand. We can go to Walmart. We can go to church. Amen. I want to tell you right now, what's more important to you in life? Amen. Is it Christ? Amen. I need Christ more than I need groceries. I promise you. Amen. And I want to tell you right now, when you make it about him, he'll make a way for you. Amen. Yes, but sometimes, and I'm getting way off course here, but I feel the letter of the Holy Ghost to say this. Sometimes, here's us. And Christ is just evolving around us. And we just reach out there and grab him when we need him. Come on, somebody. Yes. We just reach out there. All the stuff fell apart again, God. Stuff fell apart again. I need you to come on in here and do help me out. And he will, because he is a sovereign God. Yeah, man, I'm telling you, ain't no many how many times I fell on my back and I was just struggling and I was like, Lord, here I am again. Here I am again. I know you told me when I should have took the right, I still took the left. When I shouldn't have went up in that store, I shouldn't have went over here to this house, but I still done it. But here I am, he will. Amen. But he's got so much more for us. He's got so much more for us, amen. We can't be right here and let God just evolve around us. He needs to be right here. We need to evolve around him. Had somebody tell me one time, and I don't mean to preach on tithes, amen, because I believe when you get saved, that's just something you want to do. But she told me one time, she said, well, I just... I, I just ain't, I ain't going to be able to pay my tithe this week. I got this, this, that, and other going on. He ain't, he's still doing this around her life. Amen. amen. He's still doing this around her life. Because I promise you, if he's right here, amen, and you're doing this around him, amen. Man, told me right now, you'll never get led astray if Jesus is in the center of everything you do, amen. amen. Give him what is his. 
Amen. We think that we're just giving him 10% of what we own. We, we, we ain't giving him nothing. He's just letting us hold on to 90 of it. Amen. It's all his anyhow. He made it happen to where you could get it. Amen. It doesn't what nothing that you've done. Yeah, you probably got up, you went to work, but he gave you what you needed to get up and go to work. Amen. You probably, you know, got something set up and amen for, for the country that we live in that people that can't work are allowed to get a check. Well, especially when you get older and you can't move around like you did. Praise God for that. Amen. But God allowed that to happen. That don't happen everywhere. So go and give him what he is. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. And I'm going to tell you right now, my car gets better gas miles when I pay my tithes. Amen. amen. I'm going to tell you right now, he'll make it happen. You may say, well, how am I going to do this? Or how am I going to do that? Let God show you. Amen. Amen. Let him show you. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Oh, Peter just stood back and let him show him. Come on up here, sister. Don't miss some clothes. You know, there's another story in the book of uh, Joshua. I think it starts in Exodus, but it goes on into Joshua about the 12 spies. <laughs> I guess you've been reading something like that. Uh, <laughs> but anyhow, the 12 spies, they, they all went out. God sent out 12 spies into the land. And, and, and you know, we sit there and we read that. And we're like, God, why would you send 12 spies when you already knew it was over there anyhow? But he wanted to show them, amen. He wanted to show them, praise God. But he sent them over there. And then they got back, they saw these big, enormous groups of uh, clusters of grapes. They saw everything that God had told them was over there. They saw it. They let God show them, amen. They let him show them. Amen. And then they go over here and they see just a few giants. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And 10 of them came back and they were talking to, uh, talking to the people and they were like, look. Everything over there that he said was over there, amen. Everything's over there. The food, the, the land flowing, milk and honey, it's all over there. But there's giants and we cannot defeat them. I want to tell you right now, there was two of them, Joshua and Caleb. They said, we're going to let God show us, amen. We're going to let God show us, glory to God. And I'm telling you right now, whatever you're facing in your life, don't be like those ten. I want you to tell that stand flat-footed and the shouting in the mouth of hell. Amen. When that devil tells you that doubt enters into your mind, you say, devil, I'm going to let God show me, glory to God. And he will, because if you read over in the book of Joshua, yeah, they had to fight. Yeah, they had to fight battles, amen. But we got to fight battles in our life too, amen. But I want to tell you right now that God shut the sun day, made the sun stand still. He created a miracle in Joshua's life because he said, God, I'm going to let you show me. Amen. He just wants you to take one step and keep taking another one and just walk according to his word and he'll show you, amen. He will show you. Praise God. He will show you that that 12 finger and toe weird looking giant over there ain't what he thought he was going to be. Amen. That situation in your life ain't what you thought it was going to be. Amen. I want to tell you, there's a story that I was told. Brother Larry actually told it to me. I preached on it later on. But these people were over in the, Philipp the Philippines and they were uh, going through an old jail that they found in the wilderness. They were just kind of trying to get the electrical wire out of it and the pipes and stuff that they could salvage salvage or whatnot. And they, they got to ripping everything out and, and, and they got to looking at the walls in the jail. They they looked like they were steel. They were they were they were you know they were the bars and everything. They got to looking at them and a man went over there and leaned up on that wall just a little bit and it just crumbled. He had painted mortar to look like steel to keep these people bound up in prison, amen. And I want to tell you right now, if you just trust God, that's what that situation will look like in your life. You just give it one good show, amen. You'll bust right through it, praise God. Amen, if you would stand all to your feet, amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, if you would cut that off.